Mm -hmm. uh, the, this just uh, as a, a, a starter, uh, because we, we're now coming to the more religious part of uh, programming, that's uh, like uh, design part patterns and, uh, and all kind of other buzzwords. But uh, uh, this is an ancestor of Google. He's called uh, Isidore of Seville. Isidore Saint uh, San Isidoro de Sevilla. He lived around 600. That's about the same time as the Prophet Muhammad. But on the other side, he lived in Sevilla. And he wrote an encyclopedia. And he is the official uh, saint of the encyclopedia for the Catholic Church. And some years ago, he was officially nominated to be the, uh, to be the saint of computers and internet. Yeah. And I, had an, uh, I come from a Catholic family. I'm a, I'm a simple atheist. But uh, I have an aunt, or I had an aunt, and uh, she never traveled without a, an image or a statue of Saint Christoph. Christophero. He is the saint of the travelers. And she has become very old. So it might work. And um, you can download from, on the internet, there are sites you can download some images of Saint Isidore to protect your computer. I, I think that in the Vatican, they don't have McAfee or Norton or something, they trust him. My aunt would say it might work. It has nothing to do with design patterns, but I like the, the picture. Now I have to start up my presentation. There is here. Yeah. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm Herman Peren, and uh, we, are, we have a small company. Uh, I, I'm a developer, and I work together with a, a, a designer. It's my girlfriend, and it's a very small company. We want to keep it like that, and only we work together with other people to do bigger projects sometimes. I'm going to talk about uh, uh, design patterns, and that's, uh, that, that's just about uh, programming. So it's, uh, if someone here thinks it's about designing or uh, the design of a, a, a site, no. Then you better leave now, I think, because it will be very, very dull. It's a, a very dull thing. And try to make it a bit more juicier. Because, um, well, what are design? Oh, I've got this thing. Design patterns are recipes uh, uh, against common object-oriented programming problems. Uh, ma most of the time, very basic things, and you, uh, uh, th th there are some recipes already invented for it, and you don't have to do it. It's about uh, code reuse, and you have also a common language, so you have some names of uh, patterns, and so a programmer can say to you, yeah, we use a strategy for that, or we use a, uh, s some other pattern name, uh, a composite, and, and then you know immediately what they mean, is uh, the idea. Well, if you don't know what they mean, then I try to give you the idea of what they mean now, and then you don't have to read the whole book. But if you want to know more about it, then you have to read the books, and the classic book about it, this, this you have, no, dit niet meer tonen. It had a laser, oh, like this, oh, it's on Windows, but uh, you see, Windows can have design too. <laughs> uh, the classical book about design patterns is this book, Design Patterns, Elements of Reusable Object-Oriented Software. It was written in 1994 by four people, and they're mostly uh, named the Gang of Four. 
Gamma Helm Johnson Felicitas. Mostly shortened by GOF. So if you see somewhere this is a Gov pattern, then you know it's a pattern from that book, 1994. But I had a book, it was standing in my uh, cupboard for about uh, four years. And uh, yeah, yeah, I have to read it. Uh, and then I, uh, this book came out, it was so nice. If you want to know something about design patterns, I would recommend start with this book and then you, you get red ears and, uh, because it's, uh, it's a, a bit of a book uh, about a customer coming in and say, hey, I want this and that. And then uh, they say, well, yeah, yeah, okay, we, we can make that. And then the customer comes again, no, I want something else. And okay, we do that. And the customer comes again, no, I want, want to have uh, that, uh, that, that other requirement. Huh? Yeah, the solutions are inside the book, but you, the nice thing I like about that Head First Design Patterns book is that you are uh, thinking with them on the wrong track. Well, wrong track, it's the obvious solution you first do. But then the customer comes with another requirement. And then you say, yeah, 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 but if I stay on the track I was on, it won't go right. And then they invent the patterns along the way. So, after you have read that book, you want to read the, the other book. There will be more books later at the end. Because we are now going to do more general thing, there is only one constant factor in so software development. Exactly. Change. It's the only thing that is constant. <laughs> and um, the, um, w w when you have a bigger software project, then uh, you, you first think, okay, uh, do, do, do that, and uh, you, you make the requirements, you have a time path, and you have a, a release candidate, and you release the software, and you think, oh, oh, yeah, oh yeah, we have some maintenance. No, sometimes it only starts then. That, uh, with your first release, it's 20% of the, the time of a, a bigger uh, software project, and 80% is all the changes that come after that. The, the customer comes and says, yes, it's all right, I only want to have this in it. And you say, oh, no, not that. And you have to change all kinds of things. And to, uh, to make your software more flexible to accommodate to that change, that's where most patterns are made for. When you have a car and you want to change the battery, in most cars, I know, you don't have to change the steer wheel too, or the wheels. That is because it's all modular uh, uh, components that it's uh, uh, composed of. So if you, you can just interchange one thing, you say, I want another wheel, and you don't have to change the, 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 the windscreen. But in software, it's often that of th this would be an ideal if you have software that's built of all kinds of blocks, and you get a, ne a next version of the software, it's just interchange one block. You put one new block here, and all the rest stays the same or you add a block and all the rest stays the same. But uh, unfortunately, often it's uh, a little bit uh, different. Oh, here first, some uh, things, how, how do you do that uh, uh, to make it the, the, the principles that most patterns are based on are listed here. How, how do you get that software that is, uh, that is uh, modular? Um, you try to uh, one such, uh, it, it's all a bit, um, how do say, it, terms that you hear very often um, but are, are very important if you write software. That is, one thing is loose coupling. When you see those uh, blocks, they are not uh, connected in very many ways. The connections are very simple, 
so you have one simple interface. Uh, if you change one thing, then the rest stays the same. It's just here for that Mr. Uh, uh, Isidore from Sevilla that I put some Latin in and then uh, try to reuse the, the code and that is something else as copy and paste. And uh, in fact, uh, temp uh, overrides are also a bit copying. That's not completely loose coupling. It's nice that we have template overrides, but you know, if you, you make a template override, and then you get a, get a code upgrade from uh, Joomla, and the component where you made a uh, code override for uh, has a new uh, uh, security update, then you have to update your uh, template override too. Because you just copy the code and uh, change it a bit. And if it would be loosely coupled, then you could just uh, plug in the new code and it works with your code too. But So it is, it is good that we have some templates overrides that is better than it was, but it is not really loose coupling. So it could be better. Uh, uh, always try to make your um, uh, your software open for extension so it can be extended but try to keep it closed for modification so if you write a class always try to make it so that you don't have to change that class again just write a new class that uh, that adds something to it that that's the ideal nobody does it those are uh, Things we want, but never. Uh, th this is heaven. What we want to, but we never succeed in it. But we can strive for it. Um, also, try to to uh, you, you know those long classes people write with uh, with uh, thousands of um, of now well tens of uh, methods in it and all kind of things doing uh, uh, the, the method also does this and does does that. And try to keep it uh, simple always. One class, one method, does one thing, nothing else. And otherwise, write another method for it, write another class for it. Um, yeah, program against an interface and not against an implementation. Um, does everybody know what the interface uh, language construct is in PHP 5? Uh, if you want to study design patterns and you don't know what the interface is, uh, so as you have, you can extend from a class, but you can implement a, an interface. If you don't know what it is, study that first. That's an important thing. And an, an interface is a kind of shopping list for uh, uh, for methods. Uh, if you implement an interface in your uh, class, you are just saying, I want to have this, this, this method in it. So it implements that interface. If you don't know it, it's a bit uh, difficult to say, oh, we have to do 23 <laughs> patterns, so it must be a bit, uh, bit quicker maybe, but it's an important uh, thing. If you don't know the interface, what it is, uh, learn that. Yeah. How many people uh, know about interfaces? Yeah. Almost, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, if, if, you, if you don't, so it's just a few people, then uh, if you want to learn something about design patterns, very interesting, but first have a look at uh, object-oriented programming and interfaces also. What? Exactly, but in 1.6, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. In 1.6, it is compatible. But if you look at the code of 1.6, you don't see the word interface in it. Uh, at least uh, I haven't studied every line yet, but I did didn't see it much. If you look at the code of Nuku, you see the word interface regularly. So it's really based on uh, uh, PHP 5 and uh, that concept of object-oriented programming. Um, 
that, that, that's, that's always a difficult thing with Joomla also. Uh, it, it is uh, evolved from 1.0 and, and, and 1.5 and well, it's not completely rewritten, of course, but it could be made better, maybe. <laughs> huh? We're working on it. If you, if you don't do it, you get uh, another kind of uh, uh, programming structure, not the, the modular black boxes. You get uh, more, this is uh, tight coupling, so all things are together. If you change one thing here, the whole spaghetti uh, bunch. Spaghetti huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, you might get into trouble with it. <laughs> um, that's my nose, actually. <clears throat> it was in the summer, I think. But um, I w when I was starting with uh, the design patterns, I thought I was a very bad programmer because. I thought I had to, uh, I couldn't write one line before I had thought out which design patterns I, 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 I should use and what, which uh, uh, structure there would be. But in a, uh, it is a good principle in uh, software development that you just start and, okay, you can think a bit before, but you can't see every change that will come. So when you are on the way, you're programming and programming and making things a bit bigger. And then you see some things or you smell some things that you think this is not right. And that's the time when you uh, think maybe there is a pattern for it. So that's a bit a different way of uh, doing it. It's, you don't always have to say, for, okay, I'm making this pattern and this structure and this, and then after two years of uh, designing all kinds of diagrams and UML and things, you start programming. Just start program, programming, think about it on the way, and then refactor to patterns when it gets, when you get problems. Some of the problems are, <laughs> for instance, that you get duplicate code, uh, well, I won't give the examples, but there are many examples in Joomla Core also, and in, uh, uh, even in Nuka Core, small duplicate uh, uh, things. Uh, K object and K uh, uh, mix in F, uh, uh, and K database, uh, some pieces the same, uh, but understandable, and it's also. With all those things, it's not dogmatism. It's not like some Catholic Pope says, this is how it must be, and uh, you can't uh, change anything of it. It's more uh, a guide to, to strive for. Um, but, well, don't repeat yourself. That's dry. It, uh, another term, it, it, what I try to do in this hour is also that when you come to a party with uh, some software developers, then you can also say, yeah, I, I use dry, and I, uh, then they know what, what you mean, but now you know what they mean too. So dry is such a, a, a term. SRP is single responsibility principle. So only uh, give one responsibility to a class or to a, to a method as, as much as possible. Avoid long methods and a huge class. But you also, you, you know the, the concept of uh, uh, inheritance uh, in, in object-oriented programming. And you can sometimes have a whole tree, and within the tree you have a new tree and a new tree, and, uh, like you would have, a, uh, for instance, if you would have a class car, you would have a Peugeot, Volkswagen, and a, a Volvo. And you would have, a, so that's, that's a, a der derivated of, not the derivated work in the sense of GPL, but a, it's an extended from the class car. And you have maybe a classes, a, a blue a, a Volvo and a 
uh, a blue uh, uh, Volkswagen, enzovoort, and a red one, enzovoort, etc. If you do that uh, tree with, uh, if, if you extend that colors too, also you get a combinator, combinate, combi, combi, uh, you get a huge amount of clouds. <laughs> Because uh, they repeat each other the, all the time. So then you need a design pattern for, for things like that. When you see those things repeated, um, you have it, for instance, uh, I, I see it when, when, uh, when you look at uh, 1.6, the, the, um, the controllers. I see some things that I think maybe we should split that up a little bit, uh, because it's such a combination and it's coming back the combination again, so you get more classes than you need. And we could, if we, if we split that up, maybe we could use a pattern there. But, well. uh, what you also often see, that, that that's a code smell when you think, hey, maybe we need a, a pattern here, is when you get all that uh, if, then, else, if, then, else, if, then, else, case switch, and blah, 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 and it's a, a whole page, and then often there is a better solution for that. So that your code becomes more flexible. When, uh, and exhibitionistic classes is classes that show too much for uh, uh, now in PHP 5 you can uh, just say if, uh, some, if a method is private, protected or uh, uh, public. public yeah. <laughs> But don't, don't make everything public. But in PHP 4, of course, we didn't, couldn't uh, say that all. So sometimes they show too much. <coughs> the classical design patterns. Now, is, uh, that, that you can uh, categor categorize them in different categor categories. And the categories that are often used are creational, structural, and behavioral uh, patterns. And uh, in, we're now stuck to the 23 patterns that are in the classical book. So then you can say something, oh, well, I've seen all those 23 patterns. And we're going to show them all. And there are five in the creational uh, uh, category, uh, seven structural and uh, 11 behavioral and so that's, uh, that we're going to do them all. We start with the creational design patterns, and we start with a factory. Uh, a factory, uh, we all know J factory. A factory is a class that produces objects. Uh, in, uh, but with design, so this is a factory, and this, these are objects. Uh, uh, in, in the de design patterns book, it's a bit more flexible. It's uh, a class that uh, can be extended to different factories, and they have a method that implement that that gives the objects. So now, if you have uh, uh, in Joomla, you have uh, uh, just static classes: uh, get user, get DBO, uh, get uh, it's. You don't have to instantiate first uh, a factory, and if you want to use another factory, you can't extend from J factory two. And what they say in with the uh, design patterns is you could make that maybe a bit more flexible by uh, making a, a general class factory, extend the factories you uh, you want to use from that, even and do that even if you use one factory because maybe another time you want to use another factory and then use uh, methods to uh, to instantiate uh, objects but well it can be made simple too like in Joomla so it has advantages and disadvantages you get, could even make that a bit more abstract by making a Factory that produces factories. So that's 
or I want to say now, but we're not going to show any code in this uh, uh, thing about design patterns. Mostly, when you look at uh, what are design patterns, you see uh, UML di diagrams. And, uh, well, m maybe we show one or two, but uh, uh, we, we try to make those drawings to just get the essence of what are the design patterns uh, made for. Uh, design patterns are not for coded generation. Some people think that, that, that you could uh, make design patterns f uh, that automatically generate all your code. That's not, well, it, it's, it's more the concepts that you, when you learn those concepts, you can make more flexible code that is more, uh, w where you can uh, more easily change things, that can handle change more easily. Another pattern is that you, um, when, when you construct a house, you, it's uh, uh, normally easier to start with the uh, foundation and uh, then the walls and then the roof and not the other way around. So there is a, yeah, sometimes it's it, could be done, but then someone has to know what to do. So there is, uh, uh, w when you implement several uh, objects or you implement an, uh, uh, a complex object, then there is also a process of what you do first, what you do next, etc. This builder pattern says, maybe if it's very complex, you could uh, make a, a an apart, apart object, we say, a separate, a separate object of uh, th that process. So it's it's just like with a database normalization. Then you also, when you start with a database, you sometimes have a huge table and you want to split it up in all kinds of things. And design patterns, in a way, you do the same things thing with objects. That when you have a, a large complex object that does several things, you try to chop it up in several uh, 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 yeah, parts, se several objects that, that are easier to handle and that only have one uh, responsibility. This one, oh, this one is a bit more uh, uh, well known, I think. Sometimes you want to have an object that only is instantiated one time. Uh, you, for instance, you want a, a database access and you don't want, if you instantiate uh, that database access again, that it will be instantiated again, but take the one that you already had. Never more, never less. That's called a singleton. That you only have one instance of it. What? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but uh, it is uh, and with tight coupling. Yeah. And that's uh, the, the problem. That's why, uh, yeah, uh, that's also why now in 1.6, the, the main, uh, how is it called? Mainframe? No? Main. Mainframe, yeah. Dollar, dollar mainframe. Dollar mainframe is not global anymore. Uh, because that was. You have to. <laughs> huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to instance. You have to uh, call uh, get uh, get application or get uh, what is it? Get. Yeah, get application. Yeah. And that's that's good because then it's you avoid that tight coupling. So make it all uh, blocks and don't, don't assume uh, all kind of things that are uh, global. That, that, that's one thing also when you have to assume a, a lot of things. Uh, for, so, so you know that this is global, that's global, then you write your code, and, but you, 
you, you, uh, when then it changes, uh, for instance, uh, it's not a global anymore, then you have to change your code again. So uh, avoid all those things. M make a clear interface. This is what it does. This is what it needs to interact with other objects. And then it's easier to change something. You are here they are also in uh, Joomla. The J Factory is a, a class with static methods to inter, inter instantiate objects. And most of those methods use singletons. You, and uh, in many singletons, they are made in such a way that you even can't use, uh, a, a can't uh, um, instantiate the object yourself. Uh, huh? Yeah, yeah, the constructor is made private, so you can't use the, uh, the, the constructor yourself, and you have to call an instantiate method, and that is called from the factory, and so you are sure the factory first looks, do I already have a, a database connection? Uh, yes, use that. Uh, I don't have it, okay, then instantiate one and say it is instantiated. Uh, in in uh, uh, Nuku, you have it a bit different. Uh, in Nuku, you have a, f a factory with which you can instantiate any object you want, uh, if I say it right. Uh, you're mis more Mr. Nuku. So if I say something about Nuku... Do you have uh, identifiers? Huh? Do you have identifiers? You just specify an identifier to any component or any... Yeah, any component. Yeah. 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 It works to some uh, extent. Uh, so, so in Joomla, you you just say get uh, uh, get DBO, get user, get document, etc. But they're fixed classes. You can't uh, add anything to it. And in uh, Nuku. You can say uh, get, it can be anything. And you have two kinds, you have a, a get, you get a singleton, so you only get one instance of it, that they are automatically then registered, and so you can't, if you uh, do a second get, uh, you get the same object back, and you have a TMP for another instantiation. We're doing 23 patterns. Yeah. What you just explained sounds to me, but that could just be because I don't understand it, but it sounds to me as if um, what you just explained means that you're talking about a um, class uh, that is both a singleton and the factory of Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So yeah, and it is often. Yeah, 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 but it is exactly, exactly. <laughs> That is also because uh, yeah, that, that is also because uh, an, a pattern is not a class, so it's it's not an interface too. It's, so it's not really in the technical sense an implementation or an extension of a, a, a pattern, a but the pattern is a concept that is used in it, and you often have a factory that uses a singleton and a builder. Uh, a builder is never used without a factory, uh, so, so they are often combined. It's especially those five now that we have, of the, uh, we have had four now: uh, builder, factory, abstract factory, and uh, uh, singleton. They are often used together. The, uh, there's another. Now we must make a bit speed. To, so some patterns must be just very quickly. Did, oh, this is, yeah, I come from Rotterdam, sorry for, uh, if other people come from Rotterdam, but, uh, yeah, yeah, but, well, he said it the other way around, uh, he said every disadvantage has its uh, uh, advantages, uh, he, he was a football player, I, I don't like football too, but, uh, uh, and he was a, uh, uh, that, that's why I call him a Dutch uh, football pattern designer. <laughs> and uh, uh, Ajax was the club he played with, uh, uh, was a trainer with uh, a lot, and 
He's more well known as a trainer of Barcelona. Uh, and that's uh, with uh, using the patterns also, and also with, uh, 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 I, I would even say, with Nuku too, you, you, if, if it is an advantage to, uh, to split things up, they become more complicated too. It, so sometimes it might not be very good to use a pattern. It depends all on how complicated it is. And that's, you know, a classical book on programming about uh, algorithms is from Donald Knut. It's called The Art of Programming. And uh, programming is an art in so far that just like cooking, you can do so much different uh, things uh, you, you could do anything and uh, you have to develop some feeling about it what is right and what is wrong and it's also with when you uh, uh, normalize a database when you start with doing that you, you learn about foreign keys and uh, candidate keys and candidate keys must not be derivated from a primary key and etc but later you don't you never do that you see the data you, you know uh, how to normalize a database, isn't it? And, and, and I th think nobody does that very formal. And that's with design patterns also. It's more developing a feeling of what do you separate and what do you keep uh, 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 in one thing. And uh, well, separating more things make it, makes it more complicated. And so every advantage always has its disadvantage. And it's also when I just said the K factory in Nuku, uh, you can implement any, uh, uh, now you can instantiate any uh, object with it, very nice, but then you could almost use new too. So that's tight coupling again. So maybe you must look out that if you make it too much uh, uh, general, that you uh, that, that the side effects are not worse than the, the, the benefits, I think. This is another of the creational uh, uh, design patterns. If you make a pizza and you, uh, you want to have the recipe of it uh, uh, written down, you can say I want a, a pizza uh, margarita and uh, you make the dough and you uh, you put uh, the tomato sauce on it and the cheese and you, you bake it, etc. And you get another pizza, it's a bit, you make the dough, you do the, the cheese and you do the tomato sauce and you put some salami on it. And you make another pizza and the recipe is you make the dough, you make the uh, uh, tomato sauce, etc. Then it could be handy to say, well, we take one prototype, the... the the basic pizza, that is, and you copy that one and you put some different ingredients on it, and that's the recipe for uh, the recipe uh, is just take a basic pizza and put those, those ingredients on it. That's what the prototype pattern is. Oh, and now we're going very fast to the other. How much do I have? Five minutes or? No. Quarter. With quarter, 15, yeah, 15, yeah. Five, you said? No. One five, oh, okay. Yeah. You, you often see when, when code a chain, uh, no, no, you, you make some code and what you often see is that you want to have it, uh, that, that it can handle some data from all kinds of things. Uh, when you have a, a, a device like this, you could make a, uh, uh, a, a, a thing that you could put it in the, you could plug, plug it in directly, that you don't need an adapter. But it is handy to have an adapter so you don't have to have all the thing in this again. And that's also with software, which you, instead of making your software uh, get connected with everything, make a, 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 an adapter to adapt the software more easily. I'm 
Oh yeah. In, I, I, I looked through the code in uh, 1.6 and I saw, hey, we have now a J adapter. What's that? No documentation. Not what, and I think then, uh, th then uh, I, I hear Elin say, then write it in the, in the wiki. Yeah, but what does it do? So I, I spent some time, but what does it do? Where is it used? And I think it would maybe handy if someone who writes the code would put two lines in it. One, wh what the heck is it, uh, is it made for? And two, how to use it. If, you, if those two lines are there, I, it would be much more easy to write some documentation or maybe the documentation is all, that all documentation is all we need. That is something that's very good in Nuku. Most classes just have a few lines where they are for. Huh? I looked at it and I found it was, uh, it was uh, made by Sam and it's used in his uh, J updates. Uh, J, J updater, where he uses a J updater adapter. So, uh, probably it's. So, I, I didn't go further. I, I spent uh, half an hour about it, and uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. But I, but I thought, let's say here, maybe we, we could, if we write code, that just write some uh, lines to it so that someone else don't have to spend two hours first to s say what does it ex do exactly and that would s uh, save us all a lot of time. D did you want to ask some? No. Well, this is a bit uh, a difficult uh, pattern uh, that um, I think is not so used so very often but it's also uh, I just gave the example of the, uh, the, the, the tree that is extended with a, a car, uh, the, the Volvo, the Volkswagen, etc., and then the colors under it. And this is also when you uh, have some abstract uh, thing and you have some implementations and you have another abstract thing and you have some implementations and the implementations are comparable with the other implementations, then you get a, a kind of um, double in the code. You, uh, and to decouple some things. Uh, the, this drawing is, for instance, you have a class milk, and you have a class uh, of or one liter of milk and one liter of uh, uh, cola. And you could implement that in different ways. For instance, you could have a uh, a box of uh, milk, a uh, bottle of milk, three cans of milk. And if you have the abstract cola class, you could extend it to three cans of cola, a bottle of cola, or uh, maybe a box of cola. Never seen that, but could be. And what this uh, pattern says, if you have su such a thing that is implemented in the same way, so you see a kind of coded duplication, but in a very abstract way, then decouple those two, you have a, uh, a, a, a milk class and a cola class, and you have an implementation of three cans, three, uh, or a bottle and a, a box. And we have fluid and packaging. Huh? We have a fluid abstraction and yeah. packaging. Yeah, yeah. And so you can separate those things, but sometimes it's difficult to see, but you, you see it often in the, in the file structure. You see so, some things that are repeated in the same way, like those same implementation. Yeah? If you do it like this, uh, how can you implement the way to tell that uh, cans of milk don't exist, or uh, a packet of cola doesn't exist? Yeah. Yeah, the, the, you can do that. The, the, that, but then we have to go into the code. Yeah, the, the bridge pattern. Uh, when you look at, at those books, you see those bridge pattern, some such a bridge pattern more explained, and you, the UML uh, uh, pattern that's used with it, an interface.
to a, 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 a composition, you, you use, a, a, well, it's, if, but this is the yeah. essence of it. Uh, that's the reason why you use a factory for doing that. Uh, to, to, to get a photo of men, you ask a factory to do so. Yeah. And uh, if you ask a factory to, to give you a can of men, it will say it don't exist. Yeah. Yeah. So you, yeah. you don't essentiate uh, these things uh, yourself. You, you use a factory for that. I will go to uh, the next. Th this one is also well known. A composite is where you have a tree and all the notes in the tree are trees themselves. Uh, you have that with a, a menu structure, for instance. You have a menu structure, check, structure that can go on forever. Then every node in, the, in that tree, that menu tree, is a tree in itself. Uh, if, you, if you would just program it uh, all different, the nodes and the, the, the trees, then you would uh, uh, get much more complicated code than when you split that up, that you say, well, a node is the same as a tree. Can you, I mean, it's just, it's not too clear, I think. Yeah, it's, it's mostly done with recursive programming to recursively uh, yeah, you, have, you also have it with, when you have an XML parser. Uh, in XML, you uh, also have that the, the a, a node is a whole tree. So all the um, uh, all the, the uh, methods of a tree are also methods of a node. Yeah. So. Okay, but, but you can find more in, in that. So it's also a, a kind of code duplication. You, you see then, you, you think, hey, I, I, I do the same thing or about the same thing later in my code, and then you, you, use a, you could use a, a pattern for that. And you can look it up, how it's used. A decorator is um, to add some functionality to, a, uh, to an object. But the uh, the object stays, the, uh, the still has the same uh, class, so you can extend it and extend it and extend it. But you don't have to uh, open the class again. That, that's very nice. In Nuku, they have uh, a little bit different uh, decorator where they extend from K objects. So that's very uh, high in the tree. But, uh, are, are you familiar with uh, po polymorphism? Yeah. Yeah. Is, is that then the same? My polymorphism. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. You have here. This is the UML the, the diagram of a decorator. You have an uh, uh, an object an object. Okay. Yeah. An object that is uh, an, an, an concrete object where you say see components don't. Think of uh, a component in a, in, a, in a Joomla way. That's just an object. If you have an object and you have a concrete object that is extended from it, and you have a, a, a decorator that is also extended from that same component, then you can. Uh, uh, well, how must I say it? Yeah, we're running out of time. But polymorphism means that you, uh, uh, when well you have a car, how do I explain it? You have a car and it's a, you have a Volvo, you have a Volkswagen, etc. You have, uh, uh, you can uh, declarate a car and you say this car is a Volkswagen. Then you can, for the rest, in your code, uh, you don't have to say, say, do this with the Volkswagen, do this, that with the Volkswagen. No, you can do it for any car. Because and there's a linear convertible, the body more is any shape. Yeah. So when you, you write your code for the more uh, abstract uh, object, a car, 
a car can do this, can do that, etc. And there you write your, your whole uh, uh, thing for, your whole algorithm, and you, you can interchange it for another car. So you don't have to write the whole same thing for when you buy another car. You just plug in, say, now I have another car, and the whole algorithm for the car stays the same. Because uh, you, you just say a car, uh, it, uh, well. So basically, you can change your car while driving. Yeah, yeah. In, in software you can. <laughs> but uh, uh, this is what you see with a, a, a facade is you have some, something that's very difficult and you can do it with all kinds of things, but uh, the user only needs one thing. Well, you could put something before it, you leave all, you, you could say, well, I rewrite it all so it gets a simpler interface. Now you could leave all the, uh, the different objects there, but you can also provide a simpler interface. It's called a facade. Flyweight, uh, we have no time. Uh, well, yeah, that's, that's not uh, fair. Uh, you want to see them all. Um, if, 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 I will do them very, very quickly because I think I've only got half a minute. He's looking angry a bit, or not? <laughs> <laughs> Two minutes? Uh, I, I got nine minutes left on the tape. You got <laughs> nine minutes? Okay, okay yeah. um, when, when you uh, would have an, uh, an object uh, for every um, character on, on, uh, on a screen, then you could instantiate every character. Uh, then you would have a lot of objects when you have a, a, a <coughs> lot of text. But if you say, well, I've got, uh, I instantiate an A, a B, a C, a D, etc. And you say on your page, uh, this is that object, this is that object, etc. That's called a flyweight. You can, could do that same with some uh, pieces of software where you, you get a lot of uh, objects that are almost the same, you sometimes only have to instantiate one uh, thing of it and say, well, this is that thing, but it's used there, this is the thing that is used there, this is the same object, but now it's used here, instead of instantiating a lot of objects. Proxy, you, you know, a proxy, uh, may, maybe from proxy uh, as a uh, used as a, a, an in-between when you have an internet connection. But uh, uh, in software in general it is, uh, you call, uh, you say on the phone, hello mom, mom, but that piece of plastic is not your mom. She's only, this is, is only the proxy for your mother. So you can... <laughs> huh? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, now we still have 11. This is something you, when you have an, uh, an object-oriented program, programming, you have objects, and the objects have methods. And what is very good to remember is that every method can be taken out of an object and make a, can be made an, uh, a separate uh, object. You use that too with uh, RESTful web services, for instance, where, in fact, every object only has four, oh, four or five, uh, 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 not, too, not, not too many uh, methods. And uh, so you can always, if you say, if I, uh, I have uh, an object with uh, uh, 20 methods, you can always divide it into more objects with less methods. And a command is also uh, some, uh, a, a way to make an object of a method. Chain of responsibility is, if, if you have an organization, you could have one person who says, uh, you do that, and you do that, and 
you, you know, you have some tasks that have to be done and you, you go with it and you, you do that. But you, I could also say, you all know your task, I give it to you, you give it to the rest and everybody does his task, what he has to do. So organizational, it's much simpler. And in software you can use that often very well too. <clears throat> So you just give it to one and uh, I don't have to care about it. They all know their own responsibility. They all know what they have to do. Again, uh, Inuku is uh, implemented a bit different because it's not a series of uh, uh, command handlers, but a series of commands. But uh, it's a bit straight. I, it says, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I don't know. Maybe I should talk about it with Johan. But everybody is free to do his own thing, but uh, in a way, it's also those design patterns are also a common language. So, when the function is in practice, is a model? This is a, yeah, all the no, Nuku uh, 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 objects uh, or classes start with K, and all the Joomla start with J. That's a macro, yeah, yeah, exactly, it's a macro, it's just a series of commands and it's called a, a chain of commands, but it's a bit, uh, I would say, confusing, because it's not the classical pattern chain of commands, that is the thing given for a uh, interpreter, you see sometimes in uh, com content, you see uh, the curly brackets and then you get some uh, some syntax for, uh, uh, that is uh, operated uh, by, uh, or that, that is handled by a, uh, uh, by a component in, in the Joomla sense. And, uh, well, that's also a little language. If you have some language, you could make it, you could make an interpreter for it. It, it's, uh, it looks a bit more difficult than it is. And you get domain driven design, etc. Well, uh, there are more, uh, there are more first words. An iterator is a pattern that if you have, uh, <coughs> not normally in, a, in a, a PHP you have, uh, can, can say next to an array, to an object, etc. And it's all uh, the same next, but it's the same interface that is implemented. So and it, everybody knows uh, what is next then. And you don't have to uh, do that, uh, uh, write all that code for every object that iterates over a collection. Maybe if someone, something changed in an object, and another object uh, has to know that, or some other objects have, have to know that, then if you have tight coupling, then that object has to know, oh, he has to know that I've changed, he has to know that I've changed, he has to know that I've changed. And uh, if you then add uh, uh, an object, you have to, to change a lot, but if you have one uh, object in the middle, they can exchange uh, what has changed on all the other objects. So that's also a way to, uh, to avoid the tight coupling, to make it more loose. A memento is a, a way to store the, the state of an object and to restore it. It's a kind of uh, Akiba. Uh, I heard that Nicola, Nicholas was very ill and someone said that he, was, he just made it to come here because he was able to restore uh, some backup of himself <laughs> from an earlier version. Uh, Observe is a very well known pattern also in Joomla. Uh, it's, uh, uh, you, you have an object that says, hello, I'm now, uh, 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 here's an event. Uh, I, I raise and someone else says, hey, that, then I'll do that, that, that. How is that different from mediators? Huh? How is that different from mediators? Uh, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, in, in an observer, so some 
uh, uh, patterns do the same thing in a different way. Uh, in, in the observer pattern, an event is raised and another uh, uh, so a kind of uh, waving flag, hello, hello, uh, I'm now here on, uh, on prepare content and uh, someone else reacts on that. And a plugin in Joomla is an observer pattern that's also uh, implemented. And the uh, uh, mediator is, uh, yeah, is, is not working with events. It's just everything, every time a object changes, uh, they notify that. It seems like in one case it is one for many, in the other case it's many as one. Yeah, then, um, also. And many of the users of that pattern turn for the business. Just the last few uh, 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 design patterns, a state pattern is uh, uh, if you have an object and it has some methods and you can, uh, if it changes its state, that it has, then it can then have some other methods. If you implement it in that way, sometimes it's much easier than you could have several objects that uh, for different states. Can you well, leave it, but so now, I, I, I like to draw it. <laughs> Strategy pattern is very nice. Uh, in, instead of uh, if you have some possibilities, like for instance, I want to output put this in XML or in HTML or in JSON or in uh, whatever then you could, uh, uh, in, on every object, you could give them all those possibilities, how to implement it in this, how to implement it in that, and a strategy pattern, just uh, all those different strategies that you have, all the different possibilities that you have to output. It's, uh, this is about possibilities that are mutually exclusive. They are put together in one box, and you say from every, at every object, say just use that one or just use that one, but not in all the objects because then you get uh, code uh, duplication again. Um, a template method is you have uh, uh, some things that have to be done, then you uh, for instance, uh, make the dough, uh, put uh, the tomato sauce on it and uh, the, 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 the cheese. And then you have uh, some things that are always different from put this on it, put that on it. And then you have uh, put it in the oven, in the stove, that's always the same. So the things that are different are interchanged. And this is the last one, <sighs> the 23. We are over time, I think. It's uh, called visitor pattern. That's uh, 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 a pattern. It's, you could compare it a bit with a plugin. You make an object and you leave a door open uh, where you could put some uh, method in. Uh, you, you could compare it with you have, you have some houses and you have. Um, uh, they could all have their own cleaning woman, man, uh, thing. <laughs> Don't want to exclude anybody. <coughs> and, um, uh, but they could also uh, have some cleaning service that comes to the one door, to the other door, etc. That does the cleaning. Or you could have the same with a print service that comes to all those doors, etc. It's also kind of plug-in almost, but it's implemented in a different way again. And it's also a different way. It was the last of the official one. I will put one. I have some extra. This is in a, a mixing. It's not one of the official patterns. Maybe it's not even a design pattern. But it's heavily used in Ruby, <coughs> in Python, and in Nuku. So every uh, K object, object is, you can mix some uh, set of methods in it. You have some set of methods 
that you want to use in several objects. Very handy that you have those set of methods somewhere. It's called in a mixing. And you mix it into your object. It's from a, a, an ice cream uh, store in Massachusetts who had different flavors and you had different things you could put in it, some cookies or uh, concrete um, examples. Uh, very understandable. It's a, a thin book too. So, but I should start with that one or with this one, the uh, design pattern for dummies, is also a very uh, nice uh, starting book. I, 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 I always think that yeah, I'm not a dummy. Put it in my bag, and nobody has to see it, but well, it reads nice. Uh, la later, the, after those design patterns, there were much more design, hundreds, thousands maybe of design patterns that were invented. And Martin Fowler has done a lot on development of design patterns for client server structures, uh, as we have uh, in uh, the internet. And Fowler is also very well known of his refactoring book. Yeah. And Mr. Kiff. Huh? Yeah, yeah, all those. The, the, that Martin Fowler, you should go to the side of Martin Fowler too. But I think it would be wise to first do the classical patterns. And then, if you then read Martin Fowler, you understand where he's talking about. Because he builds further on it. The re refactoring, you could also refactor into patterns. This is a book of Mr. Kierievsky who invented the word code smells. This is uh, said, said a bit different. You know, the official book was uh, Design Patterns, Elements of Reusable Object Oriented Software. And here they say Design Patterns, Elements of Unsuitable Project Disoriented Software. But that's not very serious. And this is my last uh, thing. Uh, I think maybe if we look at uh, design patterns that we could uh, strive to more loose coupling of Joomla code so that if we get a next version you don't have to change too much. That's, uh, so it would be ideal if we could make, make code uh, that if you get a next a version that you even wouldn't have to change your components. That would be nice. I don't think we will uh, ever see that when we are still alive, but you never know. So, no time for questions.